Anybody tried any homework stuff yet? Which one, sir? Ninety-six. Do, do, do. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. If I say, um, if I say I talked to eighty-seven people and the mean ages of the people was seventy-two. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I love this shit. Uh, if it's a population standard deviation, they're going to have to tell you very directly. They're going to want to shout that from the rooftops. I got some shit I normally don't got. I got a population standard deviation, but here they don't say. That's the sample standard deviation. Yeah. Uh, oh, so for some reason they decided to put, I think that's where they, they put T-scores all together on it. You have to use a T-score. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, that's all. I was yeah. So a quick little review of last time. I really want this to make complete sense right now. Uh, why were T-scores invented? Why did somebody come up with them? Nope. What do you have to have before you can use a Z or a T-score? What do you have to have? You have to have a normal distribution. So why do we have Z-scores and T-scores? Because it wasn't confusing enough and math people got together and said, let's make, no, no. Why were T-scores invented? I love you guys. You're like, really this early? You're going to be asking me questions, Jeff? When we don't know you want complete energy. silence? This is how you get complete silence, Jeff. Come on now. There you go. T scores, it sounds like a note because I'm talking really slow. Some of you guys don't even have any paper out. I love you guys. T scores were invented for when I don't know the population standard deviation. I only have the sample standard deviation. That's why T scores were invented. Uh, and in fact, I mean, so we have this formula here. Oh, man. I left this all crappy. We have this one here. Does that look familiar? And then we have this one here. And of course, how do you know to use this one? Probably when you have percentages. Yeah, I want to use this one when you have means. When you use this one when you know this, that makes sense. There's going to be a third formula that's going to tell you when to use T scores. So remember the way we talked about T scores, and again, if you were not here last time, it was a bad time to miss. Videos up on. Uh, we'll talk about more T scores in a minute. If I know the population standard deviation and it's normal, I can use z-scores. If it's normal, but I don't know this, I only have the standard deviation of the sample, I have to cover my ass for that fact. I have to use something that's going to always be a little bigger than the z-score would be, and that's the t-score. That's the other chart that I gave you guys. So again, this isn't that evil. In fact, it makes a scary amount of sense that if there is something I'm not sure about in the problem, I have to somehow make up for that. I have to somehow, and I know I use this phrase, I'll cover my ass for that. And the way I cover my ass for not knowing this, only having this, I have to use something that's bigger than the z-score will be, which is what the t-score does. In fact, the smaller my sample, the bigger the t gets to cover my ass even more because I'm less and less sure. It makes a scary amount of sense. And you're like, yes, you do. I'm hoping. 
Okay. So this is what we were leading up to last time. We, I didn't actually write it down, but I kept pointing to the Z-score. We talked about the T-scores. We can't use the Z-score if I don't know the population standard deviation. I want to use something that will make it a little wider. If I'm less sure about how much this fish swims over and back and forth, I'm going to use a bigger net. So this makes the net bigger, makes the error larger. I like it. And it was created by a dude that worked at the Guinness Brewery, so that's always nice. Alcohol has helped a lot of discoveries throughout the centuries. Um, okay. And then there was another funny thing because uh, 97F, is a because it says they want to keep the error down the same. But, uh, and then, you know, where they, uh, yeah. so they, they, the answer that they give in the book, it's like, well, you know, you've got to. No, no, no. All right. Uh, Let's not look at the answer in the book because the book is sometimes wrong. That's probably not wrong there. But so the first part, they say create a confidence interval using 100 people. Now, if I keep the error bound the same, and I make my sample go down, in fact, let me just say it like this, if I take my sample, make it smaller, but I want to keep the error bound the same, and I think the words error bound is messing you up a little bit, when I do the error, it's plus or minus, right, give or take, yeah. so error bounds just mean the top and the bottom, <clears throat> mm -hmm. that's all error bound means. So error is just how much I'm off by. So if I want to keep the error the same, but I take a smaller sample, will I be more or less confident in what I find? What makes sense? Less confident. I've taken a smaller sample. Mathematically, if I make this number smaller, I have to make this number smaller. This number being smaller relates to a smaller amount of confidence. But you don't even have to look at it mathematically. You just think, if I take a smaller sample and I keep everything else the same, I'm going to be less confident. That's one of the major themes. The wording there is a little bit freaky, but okay, maybe, maybe. You guys doing all right? But if the, so if the error sample stays the same, but the sample is smaller, right? The error bound, the error bound stays the same. The error bound if is this that. stays the yes. same. But then the Z score should be Small. smaller. Totally. And if the Z score is smaller, here's the Z score being this much. Mm -hmm. Now I make my now I make my Z score smaller. Is that more or less confident? And what they say is like Again. that the confidence level will increase. Alright, so they're wrong. Yeah, okay, okay. So, what really sucks is when you pay 180 bucks for a book that's got typos in the answer key, right? Yeah, no, I know. All right, so any book's going to have typos in the answer key. This, hand, this book is free, and it has typos in the answer key. I think then you can be like, all right, that's cool. So, there are some typos, which actually for me is cool because it makes it easy to catch the people are just copying solutions. I love that shit. That's a typo. That's easy. Don't have to do any work. Okay. Anything else from homework stuff? Okay. So let's do um, a couple examples here, and I'm going to unleash you guys on a handout. All right. Let's say I. Everybody's got. Let me make sure. I think I caught up with people as I came in. Everybody got this. T score chart. Everybody has a T score chart sitting in front of them right now. They'll say, Yeah, I got that. It's back home. It won't do any good for today. Okay. Okay. And so everybody got this other thing that we still need to do the T score practice sheet. Okay. All right. So just three of you so you guys can get into it. Um, the T score chart. 
I might as well fire this guy up. <coughs> a lot of people have to be good in like this. Right. Can I get one of these? Y yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's do an example where I explain the parts of the chart and how to use the chart. So we discussed the idea of, if you look at the T-score the T -score chart, it's got something called degrees of freedom. You see that? One, two, blah, blah, blah. That's related to the sample size. The smaller the sample I take, the more I should have to go out, the bigger my net should be. Does that make sense? So you see, as you have larger and larger sample size, your T-scores get smaller and smaller. Who remembers what happens at the very bottom where it says large? Those are what? Z scores. Because again, why are T scores needed when I only have a sample standard deviation? It's an approximation to the actual population standard deviation. The bigger my sample gets, the closer S should get to sigma. Does that make sense? Let me say this again. I love you guys. I can see you right now. You're like, I'm here. What more do you want? <laughs> All right, <laughs> and I understand that feeling, I really do, but stay with me. Uh, the bigger the sample gets, the more certain I am about S in terms of S getting closer to sigma. The sample standard deviation will be, get closer to the actual population when my sample size gets close to the population size. If I took the whole freaking population, the standard deviation I find is sigma, right? So what's happening is the T-scores get smaller and smaller, and they become Z-scores when the sample's large, because then I don't need to make it larger to cover for the fact that I don't know, because then I know. I got a large-ass sample. I'm really confident in my freaking standard deviation. I don't need something to cover my ass. I know it. I know sigma, basically. Right? So as the samples get bigger, now, now how does this relate? Who remembers how degrees of freedom relates to the sample size. N, N minus one. one. N minus one. And we talked about all that before. And remember when sample standard deviation was divided by N minus one instead of N? <coughs> Way back when? Mm -hmm. This is uh, really getting a little deeper into where the hell that N minus one comes from. I'm not gonna redo what I did last time. Just that's how you figure it out. So if you have a sample size of seven on the chart, you're gonna look at six. That's amazing. Could they have made the chart in terms of N? Of course. But then they don't reinforce the idea of degrees of freedom, which you see everywhere. Um, we put this up here and see who else needs it. Oh, you gave up over there, poor little dude. Little car is like, I exist. Come on. You will turn off. No, I don't want you to turn off. Anybody need that chart there? Does everybody got this chart? This is a mouse. Everybody has this chart? Okay. Five minutes from now, I'm going to have somebody say, can I get a copy? All right. So now, the only thing we have left to explain then is, is this thing. And when I do this, when I do this, where does that guy come from? Where does that z-score come from? What is this? What, what is this? What does that equation represent? It represents a... <clears throat> it represents a what now? Confidence? Confidence. Interval. I love it. How do you know? It's got plus or minus in it. 
you remember a second ago I had three plus or minus equations related to the three types of confidence intervals? Two for the mean, Z and T, one for a percentage. By the way, I want you to realize that means that I never use T scores with percentage problems. It's always either normal Z or it's not normal, don't do shit. Okay, so where does this piece come from? From the area that comes from what? From how confident I want to be. Yeah. So if I want to be 90% confident, that's a one Z score. If I want to be 95, that's a different Z score. Are you with me? In fact, help me out. Remember, what was the 90% confidence interval Z score? 1.645. Some of you guys are starting to memorize those, yeah. which is fantastic. Don't worry. You, you have enough brain cells. You're not going to forget where you live. All right. What is 90%... Mean in terms of, let me just say this if you weren't here last time, this doesn't make sense. What area is in the tails? 5%. So, total area in the tails is? So, there's 10% in two tails, 5% in one tail. Now, look at this chart 10% in two tails, 5%. You see how they're both the same column. So, no matter which way you look at it, you're golden. Why do they do this, Jeff? Why don't you just make a single two-tail? Because today we're going to talk about if somebody makes a claim, I think the average age is bigger. That's a one-tail test because they only care about greater. I only care about one direction. So there's a reason why they split it out like this. But no matter which way you look at it, you're in the same column. If they go all the way down, it better be 1.6 for 5 or this shit is shit. Oh, there it is. Oh, too bad. Remember what's at the very bottom. Z-scores. As my sample gets smaller, I need to cover my ass more and more and more. Because the standard deviation I'm getting is, is becoming most likely worse and worse and worse. Until a very small sample, I'm using a huge freaking score. It's like, damn, you don't know shit. You better go way out. Okay, maybe we stop here for, for a minute. I'm going to relax for a second. It's early to be all this animal. I really just want this. I know it's very new, but at the same time, this is all old. We've been talking about all the parts of this forever. There's a method to my madness as to why I say things the way I do. All right, and then, you know, if you're not here, you missed all that. Sorry. See that? Degrees of freedom. Okay. All right. Ooh. Now. So let's do a problem. Let's try a problem now. Um, let's first just do a couple of T-scores. Let's find some T-scores. Uh, so let's say I want to be 90% confident. So you know which column to look at in now. To look at in now? Okay. And let's say my sample size is uh, 39. What's the, and so I only know S. So do I use a T or a Z? T. T. Why exactly? Two things. Because we don't know. Don't know sigma. Mm -hmm. It's one. It's the second and thing. And it's sample of, uh, it's, yeah. It's greater than 30. 30, so I know it's normal. If I don't know it's normal, I don't give a shit what standard deviation I know. I'm screwed. That's stats two. We don't teach stats two, sorry. That's why it's so important for us to verify it's normal. So much of what we do in steps one is based on that. All right, can you guys take a minute? Don't say anything out loud. Find the T-score for this. What's the degrees of freedom? What's the degrees of freedom? 38. Say anything, forget you. So, that's fine. so we're looking at this column still, right? Because uh -huh. it's 90%. I need to use a T score, so I gotta stop. Now, here's the, what I kind of like to say with this if you stop, you get a T score. If you go all the way down, you get a Z score. So, I know this is the T score chart, but if I use it to get Z scores, don't freak out. 
because they live at the bottom of this chart. So I, I'm going to stop because I need a T-score. So I'm going to stop at 38. I see it, Joe. Hold on. See it. Stop at 38 there. 1.686. Yes, sir. Okay, so where at the bottom does the Z-score start? At the bottom. Yeah, but like where? No, 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 no. At the bottom. At the bottom. If I said, get me a pickle from the bottom of the barrel, and you said, this pickle. No, at the bottom, at the bottom. Go to the freaking bottom. So what's at the very bottom of that column we just looked at? Just the, last, like, the last one. Oh, yeah. Okay, so just the, the last one. Yeah, yeah, the bottom. Yeah. Okay. There are some terms I just have to assume you know. Um, all right, let's do note. And then I'll let you guys try some. So that's one point, I forgot already, 686? Mm -hmm. So if you needed a confidence interval, you would put that in there instead of 1.645. It will make your error a little larger because there's something you're not as sure about. You're using an estimate for the standard deviation, not the actual standard deviation. So of course you're going to have to be more conservative. Let that make too much sense. Um, what if I wanted a 99%? Don't say anything out loud. Let's say N is 101. Uh, uh, and S is known, sigma not known. So I'm definitely going to need a T score. So let's try to see what that T score is. Which column are we looking at? First one, I like it, because 99% means there's 1% in two tails or half a percent in each one. So no matter what, what way you look at it, you'll get in this column. Go down to, what's the degrees of freedom? 100. Yeah, 2.626. Now, what if I told you N was 131? Is it on there? No. No, I'd still use the same one. Where'd it go? 2.626. Oh, so you still use the same one? Yeah, because the, this doesn't really differentiate much. Why does it not need to? Are they changing much up here? No. no. So at the bottom, they're like, so it's, if I graph these out, they would look like this. Actually, it'd be like. <laughs> they start really big and they change fast, and then they start not changing much at all. So that's why I can go by hundreds down here and then 500s. Okay, maybe, maybe. Okay, so here. When is it that I use Z scores instead? When we know the standard deviation of the population. I like it. Where did I put those? Oh, everybody's got this here? We're going to do this one right now. Did you get one of these two? Go ahead, you can work with somebody else if you want to.